And today we're honored to have been joined by two very special people in our studios of Northern Kentucky Magazine on ICN6, Dr. Annie Wiesbrood, who is the abbot of the Cincinnati Zen Center by night, P&G biologist <laughs> by day, and Kazukai Tanuhashi, who uh, better known as Kaz, if I might, sir, mm -hmm. uh, as I refer to you, you are going to be teaching us, you know, when we in America think about calligraphy, we think about how we're going to address our, our wedding invitations that will be going out. Right. That's how mm -hmm. we think mm -hmm. of calligraphy. Mm -hmm. The Eastern Asian um, calligraphy that you do is an art form. Yes, I'm from Japan, mm -hmm. but um, um, people in China, Korea and Japan, and then all the people in Vietnam use the same writing system, mm -hmm. uh, so ideographs. Mm -hmm. So one symbol to one word, so to speak. So um, we have many symbols, yes, thousands. Do. And, and mm. they are, Annie, they, they do look like an art form to, to those yes. of us who see mm. it for the very first time. You've brought Kaz in for a very special um, presentation that will take place this evening? Yes, yes. So we are kicking off our Cincinnati Zen Center Sanghas. We have several centers in the Cincinnati area. So this is part of our fall speaker series. And Kaz Tanahashi has graciously come to Cincinnati to begin this. He'll be talking tonight at our center in Price Hill. Mm -hmm. uh, and he'll be talking about the miracles of the moment, circles, and also some about Dogen, who is a famous Zen master from the 13th century. So we'll have him begin tonight uh, with a public lecture. Anyone is, is welcome to come. And then we'll follow with a meditation practice, which is what we do in Zen. What type of a, a, a group do you anticipate? Are, are, is there a lot of interest in this area for this type of study? I think that we're seeing more and more in the Cincinnati area. I'm originally from the West Coast, so this is quite common there, uh, both Zen, Buddhism, and studies of, of mm -hmm. Asian art and science and philosophy. In the Cincinnati area, we are seeing increasingly more over the years. Uh, we regularly will help with uh, university classes, mm -hmm. some meditation practices or workshops around the city, not only those that we host at our center, but also at Cincinnati Art Museum, for example, and other locations around town. Because we have several examples of the type of work that you do, and calligraphy isn't just those symbols that we're used to seeing. There is a Zen circles, the brush calligraphy, the one-stroke paintings. All of those are part of your expertise. There we're seeing uh, a piece of your work. Oh, yes, <coughs> yes. And that is? It, it means one. It means one. Yes, uh, also, you know, all together. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. A, a unity, a coming together. Right. Of yeah, mind exactly. and spirit, mm -hmm. And, mm -hmm. and this symbol that we're seeing. Oh, this is. Uh, I believe it's wind. Mm. It's wind. beautiful. Yes. Very appropriate for us uh, right now. <laughs> absolutely, we sure had some wind going on over the weekend, didn't we, oh, Annie? Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. And and where where do you reside? I live in Berkeley, California. Uh huh. Mm -hmm. So you're just here for this conference and, and to educate us a little bit. And I, I see that you have brought uh, pieces of your craft with you. Are, are you going to be doing something so that we can watch you do your calligraphy? I'll be happy to. Thank you. Um, maybe I draw a, a character, water. Okay. Probably you need some water, <laughs> right? Yes, we do. brush even is just such a, a beautiful instrument. It looks like it's, it, the, the, the pieces, the, the brush itself is made out of hair. Yes, animal ha hair. Animal hair. Like, uh, mm -hmm. Sheep and uh, And that's a symbol for hair. wind, for water. Yeah, um, originally it's sort of a pictograph of streams. Mm -hmm. Beautiful. Any, how many people can you um, hold in the in the center this evening? And, and uh, are reservations still available? Is it available? Uh, yes, people can just show up. Mm -hmm. um, so you can find our address online. Uh, just look up CincinnatiZenCenter.org, mm -hmm. uh, and you're welcome to come. Uh, we can hold anywhere between 30 to 50 people, depending on how people decide they'd like to sit. <laughs> and what will watch. Kaz be demonstrating? He'll be demonstrating his calligraphy as well as a meditation session. Mm -hmm. And then we'll be talking about the kind of the meaning of a, uh, circles in 
Zen Buddhism. Mm -hmm. So the circle is a symbol for many things, completeness, uh, together, equality, grace of God, mm -hmm. and then completeness of each moment, enlightenment, mm -hmm. and so forth. So I'd like to explore uh, the meaning of circles with mm -hmm. uh, people who are there. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. You know, that, that famous Lion King song, The Circle of Life, I mean, that's the, the first circle that comes to my mind. But certainly in these times when we're enduring economic volatility and, uh, mm -hmm. and war and uh, mm -hmm. so, many, um, so many things that just create such, so much angst and anxiety among mm -hmm. all of us, it's a, a great time to think about maybe coming together and just listening to you, meditating a little bit, and seeing that unity that we could all perhaps grasp a little bit. Each moment, we can be kind of complete. Mm -hmm. you know? That's the idea of a circle. Enjoy each moment more fully. So being quiet and uh, meditate, I think that's, that really helps us to relax and then to enjoy uh, deeply. Any, I think being quiet is probably the most difficult thing that we as a society have to do, especially here in America. We have, we're so pulled by the technology that we're so used to. When our power was out, I'm sure you experienced that same thing. We actually had to talk. I mean, yeah. we actually had to communicate, something that we're used to doing while the television is on. I mean, we don't have conversations without ESP 1, 2, 3, or 4 on in our house, ESPN. Mm -hmm. You know, sports are always on, or, or news broadcasts, or music. Yeah. To have nothing go on is, a, is quite powerful. When I first started to become more serious with this practice, and again, this is uh, from my culture growing up in Seattle, so for me this was not strange to begin a Buddhist practice, but I, I started more seriously um, about 10 years ago. Mm -hmm. And for me, one of the biggest changes is exactly what you described, which is learning to be comfortable with silence. And then after a time period, you learn that you really do prefer it. And this noise in our heads, the noise around us in the workplace, um, driving in the car with the radio on, all of these noises and stimuli that we have is actually quite distracting from the moment, mm -hmm. from what we are really doing at the time and who we really are. Mm -hmm. And that's one of the, the wonderful discoveries that I've made through my practice. Mm -hmm. And I think one of the wonderful things about Kaz, you see him as he does some of his calligraphy here. This is actually much harder than it looks. He, he, <laughs> <laughs> he led a workshop about a year and a half ago when we first met that I participated with. And I was surprised to see how much um, anxiety I have about holding a brush just to make sure. a simple brush stroke and that with his more than 50, 60 years of experience in doing this, he's able to create things that are so special and beautiful, every one. And when I'm trying it for the first time, it doesn't look like this. Absolutely. And then you start to see through your own awareness, your own anxiety, your own joy, your own frustration, just through this practice. And that's what we do in any form of meditation, is to practice this awareness so Kaz will be leading another workshop uh, starting on Friday evening at our main Zen Center in Furnace Mountain, which is in the Red River Gorge area in Kentucky. Oh, wonderful. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. wonderful. So, so yeah, we have this event tonight. Zen Monastery. Mm -hmm. yeah. and, and you have been in this country since 1977? Y yes, yes, that's right. You've resided yeah. here? Mm -hmm. yes. yes. How, how do people... How do people take you? How do people take you in and absorb your energy and your message? Do, are, are you happy with the way people receive you? Oh, yes, so much, yes. Um, I learned so much, first of all. And, you uh, learned from us? Of course. <laughs> and then, you know, just kind of being free as an artist and then a uh, peace worker and so forth, uh, doing some writing. And, uh, so I can do whatever I can, uh, you know, I do, and then uh, I enjoy, and uh, that is kind of one great thing for an artist mm -hmm. to be uh, living in the United States, and also people are kind of open to kind of this kind of art form, uh, tradition of uh, meditation. 
And we hope that you will uh, have an opportunity perhaps this evening to be a part of this uh, listening that will be going on at the Cincinnati Zen Center. Mm -hmm. Annie, so nice to meet you. Thank you for coming today and bringing you. you. I just have uh, really enjoyed meeting you, Kaz, and, and I thank you for taking the time to come today.